Joining us live now is the former special assistant to the former president and current challenger, Donald Trump. Andrew Giuliani, we've spoken to Andrew a few times this week. Always good uh, to have a bit of banter, Andrew. It's a day of history on a few different fronts. Notably, it comes just a few days after someone tried to kill him. Uh, Donald Trump, that is. Andrew, how is he feeling ahead of this moment? I know you've got a line to him. He's doing great. You would actually never know that assassination attempt happened on his life just five days ago. He's really looking forward to this speech tonight. I can tell you uh, it's going to be a historic moment. Uh, I, I really can't wait to see what he says, where this goes, the way the crowd receives him. I think it's going to be very, very emotional, to be honest, uh, probably more. And I know we talked about this a couple of days ago, more than just the humdinger we were expecting here a few days ago. I think this is going to really be a, un uh, a moment to unify the country here. So let's see if he if he takes that opportunity. I think having talked with a few of the speech writers that he will. This is how much of a nerd I am, Andrew. I watched his speech from four years ago last night. He spoke for over an hour then. Will the same be expected this time? Yeah, I take the over an hour. I don't think it'll be over an hour and 20 minutes, but call it between an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. You know, the thing with Donald Trump that you never know is he always likes to go off script a little bit. He feels the room and he likes to do that generally for the big speeches like State of the Unions or convention acceptance speeches. He'll stick a little bit more to the script. But, you know, there'll be a couple of ad libs in there, which is always fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, look, I've got to say, though, you know, on day one when he emerged for the first time, I, I, he seemed to be quite taken back by the moment, even emotional, um, if we can call it that. Andrew, I mean, it, how affected is he at the moment by what happened from a couple of days ago? Of, of course, a near-death experience would probably change anyone. Yeah, I think his perspective has really changed. We'll have to talk next week about that. I'll be with him tomorrow, and, and I'll be able to talk to him in more extent about that. And I look forward to asking those questions and really getting a feel for how he is. Um, but you could tell I've never really seen him get emotional the way that he did on Monday night and throughout some of the speeches over the first couple of nights as well. So I think it definitely has played a role. I mean, look, you can't imagine, and, and I know that we've seen the shots over and over again, the coverage, I should say, over and over again of the different angles. But, I mean, you're talking about looking just like this at a screen, and that's the difference between saving his life or, uh, sadly, us, us doing a memorial service right now yeah, for him. So that has true. to give him some perspective. It's tough for you and I to even really understand. Yeah, just looking at the Democrats, just to, just to close up now, Andrew, I mean, they're continuing to eat themselves at the moment. Joe Biden, uh, he's making the headlines this morning. Barack Obama now making a move privately on his leadership. Are you surprised that uh, that kind of talk has come back so quickly? Uh, no, because I know that they're, bit, they're dropped. And I don't this is probably a bad term to say, but the date that they need to actually get him out is by the Democratic convention. They can do it. It's difficult. But if they go past the Democratic convention, now you're talking about printing ballots with his name on it. You could always go to Kamala Harris then, but it gets more and more confusing. They basically need to unify around the candidate for the Democratic convention, which I believe is in three weeks yeah. for them at some point in August. So now's the push. That's why you're seeing Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries and even Barack Obama make those pushes now to see if they could get Joe Biden out. It'll be interesting to see if those immediate advisors around Joe Biden who want him to remain the candidate win or if some of the Democratic leadership like Obama, like Schumer, end up winning out on this. Good to talk to you again, Andrew, in uh, what looks to be a beautiful day there in Milwaukee. We'll talk to you again next week.